everybody. I'm back once more. Uh, here's my latest find. Um, you know, it's funny. It's just uh, just today I read somebody who has um, need 5,000 ultra wide angles and uh, two of them, and then he bought a, a Palosso. He called it a little brother. Um, and then a couple weeks ago I read that too, where somebody um, who has expensive eyepieces is just going back down to regular colossal eyepieces, and I thought, you know, I'm I'm doing the same too. So uh, one of my other videos you guys saw that I showed you my case uh, from one of my viewers, um, and I showed you that my case, and I said that just this year or the actually the last six months I've been collecting the Nagler uh, Teleview eyepieces, uh, which are 82 degree field of ice eyepieces. And one second. Um, so uh, the week before, I started collecting. Um, I thought, like, I, I think I want to do that too. I do have some regular super colossals, of course. Uh, I think they're Omcon uh, type of thing. But I, I just wanted to also. I wanted to do the same thing and go back down to colossal light pieces. Now, when I first started in the hobby. Uh, my collection was the Mead 4000 series um, Palosso. Uh, so I, I got a couple of those, and then he eventually, uh, when I saw the uh, the Mead 4000 series, the Japan made uh, Volcano type, uh, which were five element Palossos, I actually started collecting the whole line. Uh, for some reason, I like to collect the whole line if I can. Um, and I really like, like those. Um, I think those were one of the top of the line. It's too bad I sold them off uh, probably several years back because usually what happens is you sell out your lower eye pieces and you get something uh, more expensive, more better, um, something that has a bigger field of view type of thing, uh, which, which is kind of normal. But uh, you know, I just, just decided since I'm starting to collect the Teleview line, uh, I just want the Teleview um, Palosso set. Um, I have almost all of them now. So one weekend, um, and in that, this video, I'm going to give a shout out to a couple people. Uh, one person actually told me they, they, they want, don't want me to say their name on the internet or my, on the YouTube channel. So I said, okay, I, um, if, if that's your wishes, uh, you know, I won't name his name. But um, so I was on either uh, Canada Wide Astro Buy and Sell. I'm one of I'm one of the longest standing uh, members. If you look at my name and then look at my history, it says before 2001, and of course it goes by order. Like number one is the first member, two, three. Uh, I can't remember exactly what number I'm on. Maybe 13 or 16th member. So I'm one of the longest standing members. Um, before 2001, it says. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm on there uh, all the time, and if you guys, especially if you guys are Canadian, and you guys should be on Canada-wide Astro Buy and Sell. Of course, it's uh, an Astro site. It has um, about 10 to 12 dealers in Canada. So if you, you know, instead of buying from those big box stores or the internet stores where um, type of thing. Um, there's a, again 10 to 12 dealers in Canada uh, that has the banner. You can always go on the website if you're looking for Astro gear. But also, it's mainly for a, a lot of us uh, people that's been in the hobby to to sell our used equipment, um, buy and trade, sell that type of thing. So if you're in Canada, you should be on it anyway. You don't have to deal with uh, international shipping or even cross-border shipping. Because uh, sometimes there's uh, taxes, duties, custom, brokerage charges, and sometimes that adds up. And as well, I've been a member of other American sites, uh, no longer am. Um, I would say probably 90% of those two big ones down in the USA, 90% of every ad that you see says con con US only. That means they will not ship to anybody, not even in Canada, Mexico, internationally. They don't want to deal with the cross-border, the exchange, the customs duties, more chances of getting lost, I don't know, that type of thing. So I've been on those for uh, years and I, I'm no longer. I'm just on Canada-wide and I, 
Uh, sometimes we'll do Let Go, which is a, a new site, and uh, TGG. I usually just say TG for short, so if you hear me say that, that's what I mean. I don't want you to think I'm stuttering. Anyway, so just last week, I saw, uh, first was Roy. Roy from Edmonton, thumbs up, thank you. He was selling two of them, I believe was the 15 and the 11 Palazzo um, from Tel Aviv. So I bought that off him. And I mean, it was 60 bucks each, which is a great price. Um, these here, the Tel Aviv Palazzo's, they're about 150 bucks um, before tax. Now, some people might say, is the Palazzo eyepieces made by Tel Aviv any different than um, a standard Palazzo or Super Palazzo made by every other company? Um, it's really preference. Uh, I think what you're paying for, why you know you can get buy one of those for 40 to 50 bucks maximum, a generic one, maybe slightly less. Uh, why the Tel Aviv three, four times the expensive? Well, Tel Aviv is basically the best line there is best name brand and it's basically you're paying for R&D and quality control. They will not sell anything that's not a hundred percent perfect. So when you get Tel Aviv, you're getting the best kind of eyepieces. Um, it's not going to be ten times better than a generic Skywatcher, Mead, Celestron, Omcon, GSO, Palazzo. It's going to be very, very slight difference. It might be just a few percent. Uh, uh, the Tel Aviv might be just a few percent better. You know, will you really see that much? Maybe you know. Again, very, very slightly in the eyepiece. What you're paying for is the name brand again and the quality control. Um, just like with any uh, 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 with with any product, uh, telescopes or, or vice versa. You might have one name brand that costs more than another. Uh, and maybe the same glass and type of thing, but the one that's more expensive maybe has a better quality control where the other one might not. Anyway, so basically as you see, um, so I got uh, two of them from Roy from uh, Edmonton there, and then uh, Jason from Cochrane, uh, with the, I got the 25 and 20 off him, these two. Um, those were uh, a little bit more, $75 each used. Now what you probably see here is that as the, uh, I think, like for instance this one is an 11. Now uh, I think there is an 8 millimeter Palazzo Tel Aviv. I probably won't get that one because as you notice the eye lens or, uh, and eye lens become really small. So if you wear glasses, um, it's going to be very hard to see through it. Uh, and that's kind of normal with any kind of eyepiece you buy. So the more higher power or lower the number, that is, the lens, the eye relief, is going to get smaller and smaller. Now, that being said, um, it's usually cheaper because it's less glass. Uh, so I have the bigger ones, like as you can see with the 32, the 25, and the 20, um, you know, it, the, the lens is bigger and bigger, so of course it costs more. So like for instance, uh, the 32 is not $149, it's about $199, $219, depending where you go, before tax. So that's normal with any eyepiece, uh, it becomes more expensive, the bigger that lens or the lower power eyepieces with a bigger lens is going to cost more because the, the eyeglass, the uh, the lens is uh, three times the size of the smaller one, maybe even more. So of course you got to pay for that extra glass. Uh, again, another shout out, and I got uh, I won't say his name because this is that fella from um, Ottawa, Canada. There, he was selling a Barlow, uh, 2.5 times. Now 2.5 times is not common. Um, it's actually usually it's the two times is the most common. I would say 90%. 95% of people have a two times Barlow. There are a few people that have a three times, and Tel Aviv, uh, you know, has a 2.5. Now, what's funny is when I first got into the hobby, uh, you know, back in the 90s, I think I probably had this guy the same, or maybe not the same Barlow, but I had a 2.5 inch uh, Tel Aviv Barlow. Because uh, what happened is my first real telescope, as I told you guys in previous videos, was real telescope was the 6 inch f5 reflector on an eq4 then i used that for probably less than a year 
I got into the hobby and I was kind of hooked. So then I went up to a Mead 10 inch SCT F10 and that was an LX6 Premier. So for you guys that don't know what that is, that's similar to like a LX50 Mead. Uh, not exactly, but it's similar to, to that. Um, and then, as you guys know, when you're becoming the hobby, sometimes then you want a portable type of scope. Uh, so I back then got a Vista, which was made by Sky Instruments in BC, and they made a, a line called a Vista, and it was an 80 millimeter small refractor f/5. And um, I used a uh, this Barlow two and a half times with like I remember one time looking at Jupiter because anytime you have I mean, I try not to use Barlow's if I can with my longer focal length uh, scopes. However, if you have a short focal length uh, rich field telescope, they're also called, because the focal length is so small, to achieve those high powers, um, and again, remember, if you're using something like 6 millimeter uh, eyepiece, 8 millimeter, 5 millimeter, um, most of them, the, the, the lens is very tiny. Um, except for the very expensive models. So most times with that, those type of scopes, you have to use a barbell. So anyway, so remember back then I was using a 6.7 mead ultra wide angle 6.7 and that was the Japan uh, made uh, ones which was 84 degree field of view with this on Jupiter and it was a really nice view. Um, anyway, and then Dennis I found uh, thank you, Dennis, from Edmonton again, with a 32mm Teleview Palazzo. I believe I paid $100 uh, for it, uh, 120 shipped. But anyway, uh, so that's a pretty good price uh, again. So basically, I got my newest find, which is the Teleview Palazzo series. I just have everything but the one. Uh, I probably won't get that one because, again, I'll probably just use this Barlow with uh, these eyepieces if I need. So there you go. Here's a the Teleview series uh, Palazzo uh, are very good quality. If you're looking for a Palazzo, uh, they are a lot more expensive than the regular Palazzos that you'll find out of uh, other companies. What you're paying for is quality and uh, you know the name. So that's basically it. If you guys uh, want to try the best type of quality Palazzo, if not for almost the same money, you can get into other eyepieces that are. Uh, have a field of view of you know twice the size. This field of view here uh, is 50 degree field of view. So I mean when you're looking through it, you're seeing 50 degrees of space through the eyepieces. As I just said, some of my Mead ultra wide, you're seeing 84. Uh, Teleview also has a line called Ethos that gives you a 100 degree field of view. So that's huge. Uh, once you start observing through eyepieces that is a wide field, you'll probably never go down to a 50 degree field of view or 40, anything like that. It's just, it's just, it's almost like a spacewalk. Uh, you just see so much more space, your object will be in that field of view a lot longer before you have to track it if you don't have a tracking type of telescope. So, um, but sometimes the simplicity of having, you know, just a regular Palazzo or a lower quality eyepiece um, sometimes uh, it's just better. Simple sometimes is better. But uh, anyway, that's what the Teleview line is. That's my newest find, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.